Turns out I undersold myself. This is actually a G3930. <laughs> Next up, the cheapest CPU cooler I could find, which was about eight bucks from Zalman. Man, this is kind of a throwback to 2005. Zalman coolers used to be the bee's knees, and they definitely didn't used to be cheap. So we'll see how this holds up. As any good mining motherboard <laughs> should do. It auto powers on, out of the box. I don't think we'll need supplemental Molex power until we get the risers plugged in, but I do want to see if we can get it to post. So I've got it hooked up to the DVI port instead of the VGA. There is no HDMI on this board. And I'm not sure if that's a good sign or not. I think so. Easy. Let's take a look at the BIOS. There's actually quite a bit going on in here. So it does see my Hive OS disk. And I'm actually going to shut it down and see if it'll work with my crappier RAM. Uh, well, apparently my Hive disk is corrupted, but that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and take this down. Uh, to uh, one of my installations uh, that's got a problematic 6 GPU board and try to expand it. So I'll do as much testing as I can down there and validate how many cards this will actually accept. Unfortunately, I think I do have an issue with my garbage little Patriot RAM stick there, but it seems to work fine with my Geal Super Luce. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut it down and take it out to the field. Okay, so a quick update on the mining board. You can see I've got 11 GPUs running on that right now, and it seems happy enough with 11 GPUs. It will not work with 12, at least not 12 AMD cards. These are all Navi 2.0, uh, mostly 6600 series, but I've got, it looks like six 6800s, or five maybe in a 6700. Anyway, neither here nor there, it seems, like you can run every single slot except for the by 16. I went in to the BIOS and I uh, made sure above 4G decoding was on. It was on by default. Uh, I had to turn everything down to PCIe Gen 1. It was defaulting to Gen 2. But honestly, the board itself seems very solid. So I'll, I'll give it props. I did have issues with it the first day, but all of those turned out to just be overclocks, not um, being able to be maintained quite as well uh, on this versus my old just gaming motherboard that's a B450 Fatality with a splitter card. That thing was rock solid with nice OCs with nine GPUs, but just trying to condense uh, things a little bit. In the future, maybe I'll try, I still have the riser there for card number 12. Maybe I'll try an NVIDIA card in there and just see if it's happier with that. But anyway, honestly, if you can pick one of these things, <laughs> these things up for a hundred bucks like I did, um, not a bad play. I would say the processor is the biggest thing. So it's a sixth or seventh gen Intel platform. Uh, you're gonna be looking at Celeron G3900s, G3930s. What I will say is I actually had better luck getting the Intel Core i3 and i5 variants. So I was getting those about 60 bucks and the Bare bones G thirty nine hundreds were. Sorry, my cat is playing with a ball over there. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> God. Um, and the Celerons were about eight to ten dollars more than that. So just make sure you have all the SKUs uh, open in front of you. Honestly, it's it's pretty good. I mean, I think including the little Zalman CPU cooler, which I'll show you. That thing was eight bucks online, I think maybe 10. So including that and the CPU, I'm still in that whole thing less than 200 bucks with some basic RAM. I've got some nice RGB stuff in there right now because that's all I had close at hand. But honestly, I digress. It's still a really good deal for a board that, you know, figure worst case will do 11 GPUs. So pretty happy with it. It's been running nonstop for just about 24 hours now. I'm going to let it keep going and then I'm going to start tweaking the overclocks one by one, but pretty nice little board. Um, I'm glad I have a couple more on order. I was a little bit worried about that.